one goal of this show is to hold our lawmakers accountable to their pro-life promises. So let's take a look where we stand one month into a Trump presidency. On the campaign trail, candidate Trump made the unprecedented move to outline four pro-life commitments. In his first week in office, the president made a big step toward his promise to defund Planned Parenthood by reinstating the Mexico City policy. This stops U.S. taxpayer funding of abortion groups overseas. And one month in, President Trump has followed through on his promise to nominate a pro-life justice. Trump has nominated Judge Neil Gorsuch to replace the late Justice Antonin Scalia on the U.S. Supreme Court. The 49-year-old currently sits on the U.S. 10th Circuit Court of Appeals. Later on in the program, I speak with Utah Senator Mike Lee about what this nomination means for the pro-life movement. But joining me now is Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List, a pro-life advocacy group we are teaming up with for this program. Hooray. It's good to have you here. It's great to be here. So Marjorie, you chaired Trump's pro-life coalition during his campaign. Have you spoken with him? since he has taken office? Yes, I have a couple of times. Um, near the beginning of the administration, went over to the White House and had a meeting about the Gorsuch nomination. Um, talked to him on the phone. I've talked to Vice President Pence quite a few times. I think probably the meeting there at the White House was one of the more interesting times that I think I've, I've ever in, had in D.C. We were kind of all in, his, all in the Oval Office and uh, just because he, he wants to share everything with us, which is such a beautiful way to be. What did you take away from those conversations in that meeting? It was a really uh, strong resolve to follow through on his commitment on Gorsuch without mm. question. Also to make sure that he's constantly communicating with the people that will help make that real because con you know connecting with the Senate, making sure that the grassroots are behind that nomination is vital. Mm. Um, he's very serious and he's very warm and uh, and I've found always, um, and I don't know if it always comes through on TV, but he has a very good sense of humor, which I think if you live in D.C., you better have one, you know. Or else it'll get to you. <laughs> so one yeah. month into his presidency as a pro-life leader, what do you make of the administration so well, far? Well, I think all the things that you just listed tell the whole story. Hmm. The concrete policy commitments that he's following through on, the Supreme Court, which is necessary to uphold any of those, are vital. And frankly, the people that we work with every day, I know the people that you talk hmm. to every day, um, that are in his administration are people that believe this. That also will walk the, will, you know, talking the talk during the campaign means you're going to need to walk the walk Absolutely. in the White House, and that's happening. And yeah. we'll be holding him accountable to that. Yep. Now, you wrote an op-ed saying Democrat Senator Joe Donnelly from Indiana has a crucial role in nominating Judge Gorsuch. Why is that? He and a handful of other senators will be determinative in whether the Gorsuch nomination is uh, is confirmed or not. And he, in particular, um, calls himself a pro-life Democrat. Mm -hmm. I knew him in the House of Representatives, where he really felt he was, you know, among the top leaders in pro-life Democrats. Um, he really, uh, it's very important that he vote the right way and that a whole handful of others do the same. Mm -hmm. So all of our grassroots efforts are geared towards communicating that in Indiana and then other states with senators in the same position. So House Republicans right now are busy on focusing their plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. What will you specifically be looking for in the proposal? Well, I'm really glad you're asking because it's really easy to miss this. There's so many things that are happening and it's mm -hmm. vital. Um, when Obamacare was originally passed, there was no amendment keeping our money out of the abortion business. This new repeal and replace movement going in through the reconciliation bill has to have language that keeps our money out of the abortion business because, as we know, abortion is not health care. So we got to watch for that and make sure everybody knows what we think. We'll continue to do that. I do want to show a new advertisement you guys started running. Let's take a look. What is Planned Parenthood really about? Breast cancer screenings? We do not have mammogram machines at our health centers. Prenatal care? No, we don't do prenatal services. I mean, it's called Planned Parenthood. I know it's kind of deceiving. Now, this ad ran during Fox and Friends and MSNBC's Morning Joe. What's the strategy there? Well, we really think it's important to really meet these senators and congressmen where they are. Mm -hmm. And where they often are is watching Morning Joe. <laughs> They're coming in uh, in their cars, so we have a radio show. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really human approach. Well, let's, let's actually uh, lobby them where they are actually watching news. This is in addition to the thousands of calls coming in from the states that are from their constituents. But that message is really breaking through. We've gotten a lot of feedback from the Hill that they're actually seeing it. Going to the people with this message to defund Planned Parenthood. Right. Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you. Thank you.